Well, what I'm going to talk about is some joint work with, uh, well, it's based on two works and so with Vasily Gorbunov, Richard Rimani, and Alexander Varchin. And this is, well, I, I the prog uh, this project originates really from trying to, un to understand the completeness of Bose ansatz for X, X, well, for quantum integrable models, and in particular for X, X, X type integrable models. And well, in the way of development, it can come into close contact with some business in quantum cohomology and what I'm going to talk today is a sort of how the general construction of Malik and the Kunkov, which was appeared recently and concerns general Nakajima quiver varieties, well how it's related to XXX type integrable model and how the construct the general constructions are just reflected and correspond to what we know in integrable models from complete, well, from very old and completely different point of view. It turns out that there is very precise vocabulary between quantum cohomology and what we have in XXX integrable model. And that gives, well, from the point of view of uh, Malik and the Kunkov's contraction, this is the case of the quiver of type A. And let's correspond to, well, just will be this example of the general construction. So, and let me first say a few words about this general construction of Malik and the Kunkov. So, what they are doing, they are taking general quiver and take the Nakajima quiver variety and consider the equivariant cohomology of this variety. And, well, cohomology also for the fixed point of the toric action on this variety. And they construct certain family of maps depending on permutations in general from cohomology of the fixed point into cohomology of the quiver variety itself. And based on those maps, they define geometrically certain A matrices, solutions of the young box equation. And then based on those solutions, they are defining an algebra like Yangian, and that's quantum integrable model. And then, well, for this algebra, they can introduce transfer matrices since we have R matrices, just traces again. And then it's introducing the algebra of integrals of motion. And it turns out that, well, this algebra of integrals of motion, it depends on a bunch of parameters. And then, well, in certain limit, this algebra turns out to be just the equivariant cohomology algebra, multiplication operators. And if these parameters are coming into the game, then it turns out to be the quantum cohom equivariant cohomology of the variety. Actually, I want to comment that that yeah. follows from my work in the class. Well, Samson, you are rushing a bit. I'm just going to say that in physical language, that reflects the work of Shatashvili and Nikrasov on uh, supersymmetric gauge theories. So, well, so if we consider A type quiver, then this Nakajima quiver variety will be just the cotangent bundle of partial flag variety. And in this case, we have, well, so to fix the notation, lambda will be the collection of n capital numbers of integers. And I will fix some of all of them to be n small. And in this case, what we the algebra, which is to, comes out from Malika Kunkov's construction, is the Yangion of GLN. 
And well, what is the torus action there? We have the Lie group, well, the group GL. Well, so again, a piece of notation. <coughs> so F lambda parameterizes well partial flags. Well, in this case, those are n step flags in CN. And the, the dimensions of quotients are lambda i, so but some lambdas can be zero, so it's not necessarily exactly n step flag. And well, in this case, we have the natural action of GLN on those subspaces, and then on f lambda. And well, for the cotangent bundle, we have also the action of C star, and we assume that here the weight is negative h, and here we have the torus of diagonal matrices, and the, the weights for the components of this torus equivalent parameters are z1, zn. And then, well, in this case, if we consider, well, let me denote the total torus which I have here is T. So, and if we consider the set of fixed points here, then it's just given by coordinate flags. And, well, I can parameterize those coordinate flags. Well, I have points, coordinate flags in parameterizing in lambda, I will be the partition of the set of indexes from 1 to n into disjoint union of cardinal, well, the cardinalities of these subsets are lambda j's. So then we have here the well the set of fixed points and well we have the whole cohomology of so we consider the equivalent cohomology of the cotangent bundle. And really, we take the sum of those cohomologies over <coughs> lambda n, and well, we, this will be equivalent cohomology of the disjoint union of all cotangent bundles. And then, if we consider the cohomology of the fixed points. Well, in this case, it naturally comes out, well, the set of fixed points naturally can be identified with the product of x1s. So this, those cohomology are naturally identified with the following. Well, it can be identified naturally with the tensor product of those spaces and with tensor with polynomials in Z and H. So, what? What is X1? Well, X1 is example for, well, it's just, yes, yeah, it's just a point, yes, it's just a point. Uh, so, well, it's, it's, no, it's not a point, it's n points, n points, because, uh, well, I can put lambda 
to be a one in any of n positions. So then it's the space CN. So that's this what I can do for homology of the fixed point. And then, well, the essential, the very essential map for Malika Kunkov's construction is the map which is called stable enveloped map there. It maps this cohomology into the cohomology of the all variety and it depends on the permutation sigma in the symmetric group. And if we make a, a suitable localization here, so considering rational functions, then it's actually an isomorphism. And then, with the, well, with the help of this construction, we can consider our matrices, which are maps on this into itself while well, they are defined by just compositions. And well, those turns out to be rational functions with matrix valued rational functions. And well, by definition, they satisfy the equations like Young Bucks the equation and product formula. So what we need to compute basically here is the case n equal to. And in this case, well, it's non-trivial, it's transposition. Well, in this particular case, the calculation gives us that this element, which is in the product of two vector spaces, turns out to be just Young's matrix. So this tells us that basically, well, on this space, We have some fairly standard Youngian module structure and taking an appropriate step map for some permutation, say for the identity, we can translate this Youngian structure to the equivariant cohomologies. And then we can consider, well, standard commutative subalgebras in the Youngian. And it turns out that if we consider the Helf von Settling subalgebra, well, I will give precise definition just in a minute, considering quantum integral models, well, it turns out to be indeed the, the multiplication apparatus for equivariant cohomology. And if we consider, well, integrals of motion for quasi-periodic chains with general quasi-periodicity conditions, then it turns out to be quantum cohomology, that's the result of Malik and the Kunkov, by what they are proving, and the quasi-periodistic parameters, well, it's, they should be the quantization parameters. But, well, I'm saying that it turns out to be the case, but, in fact, to prove that, we need to identify this stable map, well, to understand that it's going on indeed, we should identify this stable enveloped map with just what we know in integrable models. And in fact, the explicit calculation of this map here is not completely trivial part, and that's, well, some part of our work, how it comes out. And it turns out to be very natural what we know in integrable models.
Yeah. So we need a natural map in the other direction. What? We need a natural map in the other direction. Uh, in other direction. Well, there is, uh, well, you are saying about restrictions. Well, not exactly, not exactly. Well, this uh, stable enveloped map, it's characterized by certain triangularity property, but it's not just inverse of the restriction. So, but, well, there are triangularity property of this map and they indeed as claimed, characterize this map uniquely, and that's basically the proof how is why I will introduce another map, and the claim that this can start with this map is based exactly on those triangularity properties, that we verify the triangularity property which should be satisfied by this map. And now, well, let me go to the integrable model construction and from this part, well, what I will borrow, I will borrow for the moment just this space as representation space for the Youngian. And for a while I will just proceed in a relatively independent way, just following the logic of integrable models. But, well, at certain point I will make a contact with the picture on the left. So, well, I'm going to consider XXX type quantum integrable model, so the Youngian GLN, and this Youngian is generated by a bunch of generators, which are organized into generating function. Well, and my normalization will be slightly not standard just to make the better match to the left-hand side. So that's generating functions, and we put those generating functions into the whole matrix, just putting this into IJ's place, and the commutation relation here, U minus V minus H, the permutation, T1 of U, T2 of V equals the opposite way. So, well, this parameter, of course, in the definition of Youngian can be removed by rescaling, but it's convenient to keep it because of the relation to that. And well, then the representation space will be this one. And well, the representation is defined by sending it into just product of L operators. So there are here n plus one spaces C and capital, and the spaces from one to n are exactly those which are entering this tensor product. And the space which is labeled by zero is the auxiliary space, which is the metric space for this matrix. And those are standard young operators, so it's element is this is matrix and this rational function of all the bunch of variables. So let's define the representation of the Youngian, but unlike what we have traditionally, well I will treat those z1, zn as variables, not as fixed numbers. Well, when we are usually doing integral models, we think about these parameters as just fixed, but I will treat them as numbers. Well, then I can introduce in a standard way 
just quantum minus quantum determinants of submatrices. And well, AP is the piece principle minor of T of U. Well, for example, A1 of U is just T11. Well, A2 of U is this quantum determinant. Oh, and so on. And the coefficients generate the commutative subalgebra in the Youngian which is called Gelfand settling subalgebra in this case. And those will be integrals of motion of quantum integrable model of hypergeometric type. But we can also consider another subalgebra. Now introducing quasi-periodic boundary conditions in a sense. So this subalgebra depends on parameters Q. There are n parameters. Really, it depends just on the point in projective space. So it does not change if you rescale all the parameters. And this algebra is generated by coefficients of the traces of the following matrix. You should take the matrix which is diagonal of Q1, Qn, multiply by T of U, and consider it exterior powers, wedge powers P. Well, wedge powers in a quantum sense. So really, there are some shifts also. So the minus are quantum minus. Well, B1 of U, for example, is going to be this trace. Well, B2 of U is going to be the sum QI, QJ. And here there is quantum minor IJ. So TII, TJJ minus TIJ, TJI. But those two are have shifted arguments. Well, usually these are formulas that you know anyways by definition, that these are the quasi-periodic ones. How does it come up that it's a quantum cohomology for them? Well, that's what I'm going to explain, basically. The point is that, well, they are proving... I can, also, I can check this kind of thing by just looking on beta equation and see that it enters in correct way. Or in well, so Baxter equations are not really essential, or Berta equations are not really essential here. What you know from Berta equations here are really generators and relations for quantum cohomology. That's yes. some a, a bit of more than you know yet for say cotangent bundles. So you know generators and relations for quantum cohomology of like variety itself, but not for the cotangent bundle. And those and that really gives you generators and relations for quantum cohomology of the cotangent bundle, generalizing Peterson formula for the flag variety itself. So, but you do not need those and that equations to learn that it will be quantum cohomology. The fact that it will be quantum cohomology will follow from the following: that on one hand, a Konkov, uh, Malik and Konkov shows that. In their construction, the traces are indeed quantum cohomology. They just show operators of quantum multiplication by second cohomology classes there. The second part will be to identify this stable enveloped map, which they have, with a certain map which will come from integrable models. And this identification will tell you that indeed there is coincidence. So 
way I understand it is I can start with quantum cohomology and after I derive, and I can, when I derive this kind of formulas, I know that it's connected to the quasi periodic boundary. Now, in that construction that Mauri Kokunkov did, well, in their construction, they do not have any Bersan Zatz yet. They, well, maybe you know more from uh, gauge theory. They do not produce any Bersan Zatz construction they yet. These what? Do they actually derive these formulas from quantum homology? Uh, what kind of formulas? Well, they, they, they do not know these kind of formulas, for example, there. Do they know that it's a quasi-periodic boundary? Well, so that I will. What they know, they know the operators of quantum multiplication by the second cohomology classes. Okay, okay, okay. That's basically enough to claim the whole quantum cohomology here. Well, we also can derive here certain operators, and we can show that they are indeed coincide with their so they multiplication. Well, they have quantization parameters. Yeah, that's, that's what will come out that this Q1, Qn, which I have here, are exactly the quantization parameters. In my construction, they are quasi-periodistic conditions. OK, that means that they don't have that state. Well, they do not know that they are quasi-periodistic conditions in their interpretation. But well, in principle, well, they have uh, those are matrices, and when they defined the algebras, well, they are putting the same diagonal. Well, that's the way how you call this diagonal matrix there, basically. They have also traces, but they consider basically all the traces because the algebra is more general. It doesn't have any wedge products. Well, they just take all the presentations, basically. So that's. OK, so that's what we have. and. This subalgebra of integrals of motion is more general, so it's not any more hypergeometric type of system. And to compute, if I fix Z1, Zn to be numbers, then for the Gelfand Selten subalgebra, I can construct eigenvectors easily. And for this, I need to make what is called the nested Bersan Zatz. And now it's some place where we really discover some relation to these stable envelope maps. Well, eventually, so let me remind a bit of the nested Bersan Zatz. So the nested Bersan Zatz, what we do, we construct certain function and then try to make auxiliary parameter in that function to be solutions of Bersan Zatz equation. What is important for me here is the construction of this function itself. Well, and it's involved also in solutions of knizhnik zamolodchikov equations, and we are calling this usually vector-valued weight function. The other name known is of shell Bursa vectors. In general, this function is given by rather large recursive procedure, but in this particular case, well, it can be written in a relatively simple way. So let me introduce just those sums. And then I should consider the bunch of variables t, i, j, where i is running from 1 till n minus 1, and j is running from 1 till lambda i. And then I consider the following product. So product well over all j's, and then it should be the product over all i's up to that. And here I should take the product of all, well, if two variables are in such way that b is smaller than a, then I put here the following combination, Tji, Tj plus 1b minus h. And if b is greater than a, well, I should put it like that. Well, that's one part of the product. 
so which relates those variables and there is another part of the product which just involves variables with the same first index from lambda j and it's ta tia minus t tja minus tgb minus h a minus TGB and all the stuff should be symmetrized well in inside variables with respect to the same second index so the first index is fixed and with respect to the second index we make symmetrization so within each group of variables with the fixed first index, we have a symmetric function. In the, in the first product, what is the ratio of A and B? Well, uh, just, uh, well, B is from 1 till A, and A is smaller than lambda J minus 1. And in this case, well, it's greater than 1, and it's smaller than lambda uh, this lambda j and lambda j plus one so as much as they can go according to this convention well what is obtained is one of the function which is i will denote by i lambda minimum and this i lambda minimum is The set which is obtained here just by taking all the sequence from 1 to n and cutting it into pieces according to. So i1 is what is running from 1 till lambda 1, then i2 is for running from lambda 1 plus 1 till lambda 2, and so on. And that's one of the functions. And the, all other functions are coming out in the following ways that we introduce the vector valued function multiplying these functions by basis vectors. This is the vector in the basis vector in this space. Well, we need to introduce a basis of Cn and then Vi is going to be a monomial tensor vector where i counts the positions so ij equals k is the same as j belongs to ik so ik counts the positions of the vector vk in this product so we are arranging a vector valued function and this vector valued function has the following symmetry if I interchange variables zi and zi plus 1, then it should be the old function of old variables multiplied by the matrix. That defines all other functions by this relation. So then, well, we have a bunch of functions. And we can introduce now functions depending on the permutation sigma. Well, what is essential for me here will be dependence on this by the following rule. This is function where I permute variable this and well I am acting by the permutation on this multiset just
in a natural way interchanging these subsets by the permutation sigma. So I have those functions which are coming out from the construction of the nested best ansatz. And it turns out that, well, these functions have very nice triangularity property. And then I can define the map similar to the stable enveloped maps using those functions. So to do that, well, I need just to do some explicit description of these cohomologies. Well, let me recall that. So it is known that the equivariant cohomology in this case can be described as the follows. So we take Well, churn roots of the bundle over F lambda with this fiber. And well, consider polynomials in those which are symmetric with respect to suitable product of symmetric groups. Well, Z1, Zn, and H are weights of the torus action. Well, the relations here are that symmetric functions of all gammas R is J's are symmetric functions of these. Also, let me introduce variables theta ij. Well, they are churn roots of the fiber with, of the bundle with fibers justifies. And then I defined the map from the cohomology of fixed points. this cohomology by sending, well, the basis vector vi into the class of the following function. Well, this map I will define, denote it this way. I should take the function w sigma i, which is defined here, and instead of variable c, T in the definition, I put those kernels. And well, these and H's are as before. Then I take project, well, then I take a class into, in this, just the relation between these classes and classes gamma is like that. So the symmetric function of theta ij with fixed i are symmetric functions of gammas h doesn't come into this relation no the h is not coming into this relation those relation doesn't depend h is just h independent so just the map is defined by replacing variables t in this formula by the theta cohomology classes. And that's defined certain map. And we can study triangularity property of this map. And the theorem is that this map is essentially the stable enveloped map. Namely, well, the, it differs by some multiplication by an explicit cohomology class. That this map W sigma is multiplication by a certain explicit class and 
just map step sigma. This class is actually certain equivariant early class. Well, it's okay. Let me. Well, let's call it E. So it's given as well. Where is? Not to make a mistake. Okay. That's the product of all those. And here I should take a product of all A's and B's. should take this large product that's equivalent to early class. But fortunately, this is not zero divisor. And therefore, well, let's basically say that this map and that are the same. So in particular, it tells us that, well, we see from the definition of our matrices that the Youngian structures are the same on this space. Therefore, the translation to the equivalent cohomology classes by those maps is the same way. Well, now to complete the things, it's just to identify, we'll need to identify certain elements which will be really multiplication by the second cohomology classes. And while on the level of integrable model, we have operators which are called usually, well, we, when we introduce, we call them dynamical Hamiltonians. And now they are also called as, well, what is called Cartan connection for Youngians. So those operators are elements of just Bursa algebra, and they can be obtained from by expanding the elements of, well, the generating series of Gaden Hamiltonia of gelfand sedlin subalgebra and integrals of motion and infinity in terms of u negative square. So explicitly, well, they are looking like that. So to get, well, this is the diagonal element ti i2 I plus well, some corrections which is coming from elements of plus here it's, well, it's minus h, and here it's some j smaller than i, tij1, tj i1 minus t i i. J, J, so they can be written explicitly in case of, well, in Gelfand settling subalgebra, they are looking like that. And if I'm going to make them depending on Q, I should take those elements and add the sum. of the following kind. Well, this lambda normal ordering is it depends on lambda, so it's going to be like that is like inside if lambda i is smaller than lambda j, and it's going to be opposite if lambda i is greater than lambda j. So that's, well, so if I just compute the action of these operators under this map, I can 
just make a calculation, I will see that these operators are going exactly into multiplication by the second cohomology classes. And for these operators, well, they are acting in an appropriate way. And I can check that acting on the identity elements, they produce the same answer. So they are really multi quantum multiplication by those cohomology classes. Well, in this particular case, it's, well, it's possible to show that it's enough to check for those elements. After appropriate localization by these, this generates the whole algebra of integrals of motion. So that makes just the end of the proof that really we have the correspondence of constructions in this case and in case of well, identification with Malika Konkov's construction. But you say that these operators also have a meaning uh, integrable Yes, those operators have the meaning of integrable system, so those what we call dynamical Hamiltonians. Their counterpart for Gaudin models, it appears first in our joint work. So what we were doing, dynamical differential equations. So there are similar equations in the Yang-Yang case, which are trigonometric dynamical differential equations, and those operators are right hand side of those. So they define the flat connection. Well, for not GL case, but for other series, this was generalized by Toledano Lareda recently. And on the other hand, well, it turns out that trigonometric differential equations, which we learned in quantum integrable models, they are the same as quantum differential equations for the quantum cohomology there. So that's, and based on that, what we can do, we can construct hypergeometric solutions of those equations, and it turns out to be relatively new results for quantum differential equations in quantum cohomology. Also, what we learned in doing XXX type integrable models, we really can describe the algebra of integrals of motion using generators and relations. They can using construct wave functions there. What? We, they cannot construct wave functions. We just said that they will have meaning in the wave functions. Yes, so. There wave functions there. They, uh, I mean the Gaudin, whatever, the integrable system wave functions. What, what are their meanings? In, in well, uh, the meaning. Well, so one meaning which I am saying that those wave functions are just uh, these stable envelope maps. That's some part of the meaning. In fact, those functions have more meaning because to do stable envelope maps, I'm replacing variables by cohomology classes. But really, those are functions of variables. And I can keep those variables and make some other changes. And conjectural meaning that those functions will be, have meaning of quantization operators. That they will provide this isomorphism of vector spaces between equivariant cohomology and quantum equivariant cohomology. So that's, they should have meaning of quantization operators, in fact. So actually, those meanings are not restricted by just coincidence with the stable, stable envelopes. They should play some wider role. So, well, just to finish, so as I said, well, we know the description of algebra of integrals of motion in terms of generation relations, but probably I don't have time to finish with that now. So that seems to be, again, a new result for quantum cohomology of the cotangent bundle, so it wasn't known yet. <coughs> and it's very natural generalization of Peterson formula for the flag variety itself. So it goes into that formula if it send h to infinity. Okay, thank you. I, I have just one question. Okay. Uh, the, the, from the quantum filter point of view, where it comes from, the, uh, this quantum homology is a uh, space of states. Yes, states okay. Vacuum states. Yes. And what you can compute, you can compute expectation values and operators in between states. And this is invariant knowledge. They, they will correspond to Hamiltonians of integral systems. 
how to answer the construct. Of course, in principle, by having all Hamiltonians calculated, you can reconstruct the states. If you have one, I mean, state of integral system, just take one state, take by the Hamiltonian and set it to general. Yes, and that's right. In principle. The fact that it's quantum cohomology was observed by Nikita and me by statement that the Baxter equation or the beta equation, when it arrives, it will be equivalent to the, those equations in a twisted quasi-periodic uh, boundary conditions yeah. on the answer. So as you compute the spectrum, you look at the spectrum, and it looks like that the spectrum of the quasi-periodic boundary conditions. In that case, when Ogunko and Maulik interpreted that, I think they actually inserted it there. So in our construction, the fact that it was quantum cohomology was, was trivial because it, it was just inserted. It's what we call Higgs branch, computes the quantum cohomology. And the beta equations were what's called Coulomb branch. This is the same seven, so they get the same answers. I think they inserted it there by hand. Well, I don't understand. In order to check that this will be quantum you actually have to construct the entire Youngian so the, to, to its quasi periodic boundary condition. And for instance, the Youngian doesn't know about quasi periodic or periodic boundary condition. Well, the Youngian yeah. itself do not know, but uh, the construction of uh, commutative subalgebra there, they depend explicitly on this quasi periodic. You have quasi periodic boundary conditions, and for each Boundary condition, you have its own commutative subalgebra. I see they constructed the commutative subalgebra. Yes, they so there is a bunch of uh, this family of commutative subalgebras depending on quasi periodic okay. boundary conditions. So they constructed the commutative operators and they. Yes, they constructed, yes. They're taking Qs, and for each set of Qs, they constructed the commutative subalgebra. Okay. 